Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. Uh, I am Richard and this is uh, yet again another Sumerian September installment for September 5th. And today I will be talking uh, briefly about the God in the Bowl. So this is the next story and the, uh, you know, in the series of stories that are contained here in the coming of Conan. And, um, uh, and this is just, this is an 18 or 17 page story. However, on audio, it runs a little bit over an hour. So, um, you know, so it is a, a pretty decent length short story here. And it takes us to an earlier time in Conan's career when um, he was relying mostly on uh, on thievery. So he was a, um, he's a thief. He is here in, in, in this image you actually see in this image here. Conan is breaking into the, um, the home of a, of a, uh, a noble merchant uh, and, and someone who acquires uh, artifacts from, uh, from all around the, you know, Hyborian world. And um, this is why Conan was there, was to break into this home to steal. And as he is breaking into the home, uh, he, or, or museum or, or the building that he is breaking into, uh, he immediately sees this scene here of a, a dead man. The man is the owner of the home and a guard leaning over his body. And as Conan enters in through the window at that inopportune moment, um, he is quickly accused of uh, having killed this man. And Conan, of course, says, you know, it was not me. He shakes his head and says, it, you know, it was not me. But um, the, the town guard is called into the, uh, into the place. And they're, of course, going to shut the whole place down. And the accusations start flying. And um, Conan being an outlander, you know, not of this, you know, not of this city or even of this, this country. Um, you know, they're of course going to, uh, make him the scapegoat of this, but it's a, it's a mystery. Like they're trying to figure out, um, you know, how this man was killed and, you know, why this man and what really was Conan's purpose there. And Conan admits that I was here to steal, although he lies and says I was here to steal food, um, which they don't believe him, but, um, they start trying to piece together exactly how this occurred and it, it doesn't appear that he was was killed by any means that Conan might have used and so they start investigating around the space and um, another individual one another guard is is suddenly killed and they hear the screeches and when they run there they come in on to, upon this scene here and there is a there is a, a circular um, object, you know, um, it's actually a, um, like a sarcophagus, but it's, you know, a different shape. It's not in a human shape or whatnot. And they don't necessarily understand that it is a sarcophagus. And so there is this huge bowl that appears to have had its hinges broken open and you can see the tools up around it and yet there's nothing inside the bowl and now they're they're really curious now because the other man was killed in the presence when Conan was in the presence of the rest of the guards so now there's a mystery involved and they continue going about and and trying to piece this together and then we come upon this scene here so the there's various different scenes and uh although this is one that comes up and shows conan in shackles against the snake that's really not what happens in the story it is more akin to what is on the front cover here uh for the god in the bowl and what was inside the bowl was a uh was a slumbering serpent by 
by some strange means, the serpent was sealed inside the bowl and uh, it remained there uh, until the seal was broken. And then, of course, it attacked the, uh, the individuals that it came across. So, again, it's a very... It's a very kind of straightforward story, once again. It gives you some, uh, some notion of the Hyborian Age as being a place where um, people often are, are drawn to uh, make desperate decisions you know, in their lifestyles, uh, such as like Conan having to rely on thievery and mercenary work and that kind of stuff. And, um, but it also puts in that element of um, age old mystery and magic and sorcery and that kind of thing as well. It makes the, it makes the very strange, um, you know, and unexplainable uh, things of the ancient times. Uh, and and carries them forward into their present day, which is still ten thousand plus years, um, you know, uh, in in world history. Here, I mean, Hy Hyborian age is an age in you know the real world. It's just hidden behind you know ten thousand years in mystery and such. So it's 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 before recorded history, before you know, as the Nemedian Chronicles begins, right? You know, between the times of the sinking of the Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius. So it is during a time frame that we don't have a history for. Uh, and that, that was the brilliance of Robert E. Howard's, you know, he had an understanding of history and kind of knew when to plant these kinds of stories into them to still give them a sense of fantasticalness and yet still believability um, that you can kind of draw some parallels to the more modern world uh, and yet still have the fantasy element and the horror element and the, the magical elements of it uh, still, once again, somewhat believable. So <coughs> another really important story um, it gives you another glimpse into Conan's earlier career, you know, as a thief and, and just the, it also gives you a sense of how there's a clash between Conan and his background and the civilizations that he is adventuring in and how they are two very separate worlds that true separation between barbarism and and some of the the honorable aspects of barbarous uh, society as opposed to <coughs> the um, the supposed advancements of civilization um, and neither neither aspect uh, of human culture uh, really do understand one another. Uh, they are very alien to one another in many ways. And so that is also further supported in this story as well. So, um, you know, really enjoyable story. I'm looking to, you know, keep on plodding through it and give it another, uh, another partial read through it and another listen uh, you know, to it as well. But um, this is a story that I have read a dozen times, you know, over the, you know, many years that I have been reading Robert E. Howard's works. And um, I've listened to it at least two or three times on audio over the last several years as well. And so, uh, and I've seen it certainly in comics, as you can see in the image, uh, so it is a very, very familiar story. Um, the theme is, you know, like I said, it's very straightforward, but the, where the nuances really come from is, I think, that lack of understanding between the civilized world and the barbarous world 
Uh, and, uh, and I think that's the greatest takeaway uh, from a story like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, as always, uh, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. Uh, please feel free to jump in on the comments uh, section, uh, like and subscribe and share. And uh, you all have a rest, uh, you know, great rest of your week and the upcoming weekend. Enjoy the upcoming weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. So uh, end of the week for most of us. You have a great one. Take care.